Hi, welcome to DP Kids. Today we're going to show you how to sew some bunting. So let's take a look at what we need. You're going to need two pieces of fabric or one big piece of fabric. I suggest a meter in total and some bias binding. Now lay your fabric out in front of you, folding it in half side to side and you're going to measure 20 centimeters from the top and draw a line all the way across to the other side. I've made it easy by making a template um, that I can follow. It's just a piece of cardboard from a cereal box. And then you're going to cut along that line and that strip is going to be the height of your bunting flags. Once you've cut along all the way to the end, you can repeat it on your next piece of fabric. Now, if you want to make it all the one color, then you can just do that. Or if you'd like to have something a little bit different, or you might have lots of different color flags in your bunting, whatever look that you're going for. You can also use any type of fabric. Here I'm using a drill fabric. You could use a poplin. You could use a hessian, a calico, whatever type of fabric you like. So once you've done that, lay your pieces out together, um, right sides facing in. So that way, as you sew, you've got the, ins the outside on the inside. And you're going to measure, starting from the selvage, 20 centimeters and mark every 20 centimeters. Down the bottom, however, you're going to make a mark at 10 centimeters and then you're going to mark every 20 centimeters from there. So up the top, 20 centimeters all the way along. At the bottom, the first mark at 10 centimeters and then a mark every 20 centimeters. Also ensuring that you're not including the selvage. Then you're going to take a piece of paper or a ruler, whatever you have handy, and you're going to connect the 10 centimeter mark to the very first 20 centimeter mark and making these zigzaggy type lines that you can see that I'm making here. This is going to be your flag shape. So you can adjust this flag shape if you want a bit wider, a bit shorter, a bit taller, whatever suits you. Then you're going to cut along the black lines that you just ruled. You could use a um, dressmaker's chalk if you wanted. I just use a permanent marker. It doesn't show up in the ends with your stitching. So cut them all out there and then you're going to prepare to sew. You are going to sew along the black lines that you just cut leaving the top edge open which you'll see here so to start off you don't need to do a little back and forth thing you just start straight off and i always start on the right side of the flag sew down to the point turn it around and then sew back up to the top and instead of lifting your foot and cutting the the thread and starting again you just keep sewing when you get to the end just go past the end a tiny bit get your next little flag pop it in there and then just keep sewing and continue this until all your flags have been sewn when you've done that you'll be able to easily trim them all and you'll have it all ready to go so turning it around now, it doesn't matter what color cotton you use on the inside because it won't be seen. But on the outside, I like to use the same color cotton as the bias binding that I'm using. So once you've got them all sewn, you're going to just snip them apart so they're loose from each other. And then you're going to get ready to trim them and turn them in the right way out. So what I like to do is I like to trim at the very tip the very point of it and then if you just do a little snip to make it nice and skinny so when it is turned in the right way it's not too bulky then you're going to turn it in the right way poke your finger up in there give the streams a little seams a little bit of a stretch find something blunt poke it up in there too so you get a nice point you can roll it around in your fingers and then that's it turn them all in the right way and get ready to iron so now you need to iron them flat with sewing it's always important to iron your seams as you go it just gives you a nice neat finish so once you've sewn all of these down um sorry ironed all of these down you'll be able to be prepared for the next step which is giving them a trim across the top because you'll notice now they're in the right way. They've got little points that stick up. Some of the tops don't match on both sides. So you're going to just trim straight across to make a straight edge for when you're sewing into the bias binding. 
and just what I've done is because the way the fabric is cut some of my pattern is upside down and some of my pattern is up the right way so I'm just going to sort them into piles of up the right way and upside down so I can alternate as I'm stitching into the binding once you've done that get your binding ready I measure along 30 centimeters and mark with a pin and that way I've left myself enough room to tie my bunting to whatever it is going to be tied to at the end so fold it in half and stitch it down until that point you'll find with bias binding some of it's very um, you know thin so as you're sewing you might need to pull it through the machines just gently so that way it moves straight through now I'm going to do alternate flags here starting with one that's up the right way the one that's up the wrong way so that way the pattern is spread out evenly and just putting my my bias binding in here starting to stitch and just going along slowly to that 30 centimeter mark if you find it doesn't go through as I said just gently give it a little pull and just let the machine guide you and then stop when you get to that pin then you're going to get your first flag and you're going to put the very top section as far into that fold as you can and you're going to hold the fold over the top and you're going to keep sewing so it can be a little bit tricky to line up sometimes if you line up that first point and just give it a little pinch sew it down a little bit so the fat flags in place and then you'll be able to keep going here you can see I, I rest the edge of my foot with the edge of the bunting to make sure I get a nice even line and also make sure that all the flag fabric is enclosed so stitching along that first one there when you get to the end you're just going to get your next flag inserted as close as possible to the last flag and continue to sew just lining it up neatly as you go so do this all the way to the end remembering to leave 30 centimeters at the other end of the string so that way you've got it even spacing for tying up later Alternatively, if you just want a short piece of bunting, you can stop wherever your flags end or you can keep going. Now, if you don't have bias binding, you could just use a wider piece of ribbon and fold that over in half. Or you could um, make your own bias binding, which is quite tricky, but you don't have to do that. So here you can see you just measure it down 30 centimetres, tie it in a knot and your bunting is complete. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for future videos.